Okay, so assuming you've got part one and part two complete, the next step here is to install the MySQL connector and we'll compile the MySQL2 gem using that connector. To get the connector, you have to go to dev.mysql.com and from there click downloads. And on the left, you'll see MySQL connectors. Click that. And from here, we'll scroll down to this link here, the connector slash C libmysql client. That's the one we want. The most recent version uh, doesn't seem to work in my testing. So we want the previous version. Just over here, you'll see this link looking for previous versions. Click that. And verify on this page that you're seeing this connector slash C602. Now we'll scroll down. And this link here, the, where it says Windows x86 32-bit zip archive, there's, there's two of them here. We want the second one. And make sure that you've got this file here, this MySQL connector C no install 602 win32.zip. So click over here and download that. Again, verify that you got the right correct or the correct version here. Uh, we won't bother logging in or signing up, just start the download. So my on my system here anyway, it automatically uh, opened up the zip file, and in here you'll see that there's a folder, the MySQL Connector C folder here. Right click and copy that and paste it into the root of C. Just like that. Okay, now when you click on C, you should see that, that directory. Double click to open it and verify that you got bin, include lib, that looks right. Before we go and compile the gem, we want to double click lib and in there you'll see this libmysql.dll. Right click and copy that and go and place that in the Ruby 2.0.0 bin directory. So we'll paste it in here. Okay, so once the DLL is done or is placed there, we can start up the command prompt and let's cd into the uh, dev directory and you'll notice that we've got the MySQL2 directory there. That was from the uh, previous install uh, or sorry from the previous uh, video where we verified git. Um, if you don't have that there maybe take a look at that video to clone the, git rep the MySQL2 repository but since we've got it here I'm just going to cd into it like this and hit dir and you'll notice that here we've got we're sitting in the repository right so in uh, as with any software they, they have versions and in a git repository it's you typically tag releases so we can list the tags git tag dash l and you'll notice that we've got a bunch of different releases here the one we want to check out is this 0313. So the way to do that is git uh, checkout and just put in 0.3.13 just like that and hit enter. Now it's telling us that we're in a detached state. If we wanted to do some development uh, it's, it's telling us that we should create a new branch but we're not actually doing development of the gem so this is fine. The most important part is that the code that we have is at this particular release. Okay, so now we need to build the gem first. So we do gem build, and we build gems by referencing a gem spec. And in that directory, there's a MySQL 2.gem spec, which is going to um, build the gem based on that. So we let's hit enter, and you can see it says it's successfully built. There's the version. And it's generated a file here, the MySQL2 uh, gem file. If we hit DIR, you can see, sure enough, there's the MySQL2 gem file. So now to install the gem file, we're going to do gem install MySQL2. And I'm just going to hit uh, a dash, then I'm going to hit tab to complete. So you'll see how we got the, the correct version here and the, the gem file specified. I'm going to add a couple arguments here, no ri and no rdoc. 
and then we're going to add a double dash here and then a space and what that does is it's going to separate out the command arguments here so these arguments before the dash dash go to the gem executable the, the arguments that follow the dash dash go to the compiler and in this case we only have one argument it's dash dash with mysql dash dir equals and I should just say that again dash dash with dash mysql dash dir equals and then we're going to put c colon backslash and then type my and hit tab and you can see here that we've got the mysql connector the tab completion filled out the rest and with that we can hit enter and you can see now that it's using devkit to build the extension and it's telling us that it's using this command uh, argument to build the gem and you can see here it says it's successfully installed so that's uh, that's good news but we need some further verification on this and the way we're going to do that is just write a little bit of Ruby code that will test the MySQL 2 gem so let's go up one directory and I should mention that I'm assuming that you've got the MySQL database installed so for example when I type in MySQL dash dash user root dash p and I enter in my password I now have the MySQL prompt if if the MySQL command doesn't work for you uh, I've got instructions on how to install uh, the MySQL server and to put the command the MySQL executables on the path so that no matter where you are in the command prompt you can run MySQL I'll I'll put a link in the description and if you again if you don't have that I'd encourage you to go install that first and then come back to this point um, so with the MySQL command prompt we can can I don't know, show databases is one command within MySQL to show that here's the default databases it has but anyway so we'll we'll exit out of that and we'll figure out how we're going to test this. Let's uh, make a directory off of the dev directory here called uh, MySQL test. And what I'm going to do here is launch up one of my favorite editors, uh, Sublime Text. And you can Google that and download it. It's a um, you do have to pay for a license, but there's a trial period and. I think it's 30 days or something like that. Anyway, I highly encourage you to take a look at that. But really, for our purposes, we just need any kind of text editor. But using Sublime Text 2, I'm just going to go to Project, Add Folder to Project, and I'm going to select under Dev the MySQL Test. Click OK. And in here, I'm going to right-click on that and go New File. And right away, I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it Test.rb. And let's. Uh, let's start here. So, first thing we need to do is require the MySQL2 library. And we need to set up the client. MySQL2 client.new. We're going to specify the uh, host. So, we're just going to use localhost. That's where our database is installed. And the username. We're going to use root. The password is, in my case, it's password one. In your case, it might be. It's probably different. Although I think in my instructions I used password one. So, however, whatever password you used, make sure you specify that there. And next, we'll specify the query that we want to run. So, in this case, I'm going to do uh, select now as timestamp. And that's basically just going to give us the current time and with the column header being timestamp. And now we'll execute the query client.query SQL. Right? And now this command will return a result set. In this case, it's only going to be one, uh, one element in that array, but we'll iterate through it anyway. So we'll do result dot each do we'll go row here we've got uh, we'll just do puts row timestamp okay so let's go back to the command prompt 
And if we hit DIR, you'll notice, uh, sorry, that we've got the MySQL test. We'll CD into that and DIR. And now we've got the test.rb file there. In order to execute it, we'll just do Ruby space test.rb and hit enter. And you can see that that was successful. That timestamp is coming from the, the MySQL database. If you wanted to do um, another test, let's try something here real quick. Let's change the SQL to say show databases. And then we'll, we'll loop through those. And I happen to know the column header there is database. Okay, so now when we go back to the command line and we run it again, you can see that that you know, went through the, the listing of the databases and we outputted each one. So with that, that's a great test to show that the MySQL 2 connector uh, and gem is working. I think we're ready to move on to the next step, and that's installing Rails.